everyone, welcome back to the blog. I am so happy today to have Scott Inman of Triumphant Quartet. So welcome, thanks for being on. Hey, so glad to be here. Thank you for asking me to do this. So we're gonna get started with um, introduction, just kind of if people are new and don't know exactly what you do and you know your family. Um, do you wanna kind of go through that for us? Yeah, um, I'm married uh, to Casey. Inman for 10 years. We've been married for 10 years. We have two kids, Embry, and uh, Embry's are, she'll probably be six when this airs. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, but, and uh, Bo is my soon to be three year old. So the house is loud. Matter of fact, you may hear screaming in the other room if you listen closely, because <laughs> I just heard it. So they're so cute. They're awesome. Thank you. And then um, you do sing for Triumphant Quartet. So yes, I'm sorry. Up. <laughs> yes, uh, for 16 years I've been singing with uh, the group Triumphant, and um, all the four singers are the original members, and which is very neat. And um, my dad actually is a part of that group as well, so I get to sing on stage with my dad every night. But we're all like brothers, and it's kind of like a, I say kind of like a band of brothers, I guess. But it's a, it's a lot of fun. We have a good time, and uh, yeah, it's just been incredible. God's been good to us. Well, that's great. Yeah, I know that's one thing that's unique about y'all's group is you don't really find that anymore where there's the same original members that it started out with because usually, you know, they change in them. So how did you get your start in gospel music and kind of tell us, I guess that kind of goes along with how Triumphant got its start. Um, so how did y'all start in gospel music? Well, okay. Well, my dad has been singing my whole life. So I grew up a Southern gospel baby. You know, so, I mean, I grew up in it. I knew, uh, so uh, that that out of the way, I didn't want to do it. I didn't mm -hmm. want to sing. I had stage fright, scared to death. Um, I'd watched it my whole life, but I'd never even dreamed of doing it. But uh, at 16 years old, at a youth um, conference, I knew if I didn't get saved that night, I thought I was, which is, that's a whole nother uh, story. But I, um, at, at 16 years old, I thought if, if Jesus were to come back tonight, I wouldn't be going to heaven. Mm -hmm. So I got saved that night uh, to the surprise of a lot of people because they already thought maybe I was. But immediately after that, um, the Lord put in my heart to uh, take all that fear of seeing those stage away. And all those years of watching my dad, you know, I, I, walked, I walked on stage and sang. And two years later, I met Phil Cross. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil Cross put voices at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, hey, my name is Scott Inman. You may know my dad, Clayton Inman. He's like, yeah, I know your dad. It's like, well, if you ever need a baritone singer or ever need a singer, um, mm -hmm. I, I didn't really know what part I was, but um, give me a call. Well, it wasn't long after that I got a call from him. And um, I was actually working in a restaurant when he walked in at, at Pigeon Forest, Tennessee. And so he gave me my start. And a year later, Triumphant started. Wow. And um, if you told us we'd be the same member 16 years later, we'd say probably not, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's been incredible. So that's kind of, I hope I answered the question the best I could, but that's kind of the fast forward answer. So. Well, that's amazing. And it's amazing how you did want to do it. And then your whole perspective shifted that that's amazing. So yeah, a, lot yeah, when I got, me, a lot of times God is the only one that can really tell us as far as, you know, he can lay on our heart, what, we, you know, he wants us to do. So that's great. Um, mm -hmm. So what gave you the passion to become a singer? So once your, you know, once your mindset shifted, what kind of inspired you to do that? Well, obviously, okay, first off, um, I love the music. Mm -hmm. I, just, I, lo I love music. Um, I'm one of those people that listens to music all day. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, <laughs> I, I'm not in the car unless the music's on, mm -hmm. uh, even if it's at a low volume. Um, I just love music. I think it's part of why I write um, and, and sing. So, I mean, I'm not going to, uh, I love music first off, but man, gospel music, Christian music, let's just say Christian music. It has such a, I mean, it says, it means something. It has an internal difference in people's life. And exactly. um, so that's, and then that's, it's, it's, there's been songs we've recorded over the years and people come to the table and go, man, if it wasn't for that song, mm -hmm. I might not even be here. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's strong yeah. to know that music has that much power um, in people's minds. And, and also, I mean, I'll say also in a, in a negative way, it does too, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. But Christian music doesn't. Christian music uh, can 
can change lives. And just to yeah. be a part of something like that is just is amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. I know. I think one of the one of the biggest things is for y'all. I know I've heard from multiple different artists that that's one thing that really keeps y'all going is whenever you hear you know the stories behind the the stories that people come up and tell y'all. You know that certain songs help them get through certain things. And um, so yeah, that that's great. Um, and, and, and I will say, and let me add this too, on a personal level, mm -hmm. there's been many times uh, going through things in my life where um, a lyric to a song went through my mind. You know, just like yeah. the melody and the lyric combined, and it just kind of helped me get through those moments uh, with comfort. And so, yeah, even on a personal level. So Yeah, and a lot of times music is a way that we can connect whenever we can't remember anything else, we'll remember a song, we'll remember a chorus, we'll remember a verse, you know, whenever we can't remember anything else in that moment, we'll remember that. So yes, that's great. So um, one of the songs that y'all have that has been a huge hit, and I know it's ministered to a lot of people is um, Somebody Died For Me. So mm -hmm. I'm curious to know what is the meaning behind that song? And where did it come from? Okay, uh, this was actually one of the first songs that I ever kind of found mm -hmm. uh, for myself. Uh, we sang with Louise Mandrell at her theater. Mm -hmm. She's the one that started our group where um, her uh, nephew married a lady named Christy Sutherland who lives in the Nashville area. Okay. Yeah. And she's an, she's an artist as well mm -hmm. and a wonderful, wonderful artist and a uh, great singer, great person. Well, anyway, she co-wrote that song years ago and sang it at an event that she was with, with us and she was singing before us and I was out in the audience listening to her. And she sang this song and I was like, oh my goodness. I don't know as wow. I've ever heard a, a song that well crafted. I mean, it's mm -hmm. amazing. And I walked to the back. I said, guys, on our next album, I'm going to record that song if she gives me the okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're like, okay. They didn't even hear it. I'm thinking. They're like, all right, you know, if you feel that strong about it. Well, a year later, I didn't forget it. We recorded a year later and um, I recorded that song and man, there's so many people that can relate to that. I can't really relate to the story of the soldier. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously every Christian can relate to the fact that Jesus died for them. Exactly. And uh, before you even needed a savior, he was mm -hmm. there, you know, before we even knew we needed help, uh, he died for us. And, uh, but this, this, what makes this story so um, awesome is, is it takes it to a personal level with people who've gone through the, um, having family members in the army mm -hmm. concerned about them. And there's been some stories she read in a paper where um, a guy took a bullet for his friend, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the fact that he was like, you know, this person died for me in, in my place. So he took, you know, he took it for me. And uh, it was such a powerful story that she wrote a song and, and also made it to where, you know, obviously the same can be said for us as Christians, you know, yeah. he took the, he took the nails for us. It's just a powerful song, and like it I said, is. it's it's it's, it's well crafted. How people can put those words in those few of lines mm -hmm. and get the point across is just really cool. So, yeah, it's it's great. It's one of my favorite songs. It's awesome. Um, so I know that songwriting is a big passion of yours. Um, mm -hmm. I think you spend a lot of time in writing rooms and things, as a co-writer and a writer. Um, and you've written some incredible songs. So. What advice would you give to an aspiring songwriter? Surround yourself with people better than you are to where you can learn. I think, that, I think that's the big thing. Uh, and I think it's that way in anything. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some people run for people who are um, maybe quote unquote better than they are. You know, mm -hmm. if, if I, if I can just stay over here, um, yeah. you know, and I can be a, a maybe a, uh, you know what I'm trying to say. Yes. But if you get around people who are better at the craft than you are, and you can learn from them and pull from them, and, and say, why they do? Why did you do that? Why did you say that? Why did you go there? Why did you, mm -hmm. you know? But and on a spiritual level, you know, just be around, you know, stay in the Word, be around Christian people, uh, fill your mind with with positive, uh, you know things that will help you with lyrics. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah. you know, if, if you're not around it and you don't, and you, and you don't know um, anything about it, how can you write about it? That's true. Yeah. Um, so I would say surround yourself with, with people a lot better than you are. Mm 
at your craft to where maybe one day you can, you know, reach that level and maybe even, you know, take it further and just uh, be more informed about what you're wanting to say. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that's such great advice for anything. I mean, having those people to look up to is such a helpful tool um, because, I mean, they can come alongside you and mentor you not only in that lane, but in other lanes. So that's yeah, great. I, the, I've been, uh, been blessed to have a lot of friends. I'm not going to start naming names who have <laughs> taken time, who, who have taken time with me and uh, I'll be forever uh, grateful for that. And I've learned so much from them and it's made, me a personal better writer because they took time to co-write songs with me. So um, it's, it's incredible. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what is your favorite part of the songwriting process? Hearing it recorded. Um, hearing the track laid down in the studio or getting the mix from a group who just brought your song to life, mm-hmm. which is basically what it is. You know, yeah. if you, if you could only hear, the demos from the writing room and you're thinking that's terrible. <laughs> but then when you hear it all put together with all the stuff, I mean, they're not all terrible, but you get my point. It's like, Oh, that's good. I mean, it's just a <laughs> piano. Big deal. Yeah. Um, but when you hear it all put together, it's like, wow, that's like, it that clicks, song now yeah. has life. It has a, has a tempo. It has parts, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. I, and I'll that's actually my favorite part of what we do is the recording process. I love, making of the album, creating the albums. Mm-hmm. It's kind of that's my, awesome. That's cool. Yeah. I, I imagine that's a cool feeling, you know, hearing it come to life and everything. So yeah. what's, what is a song that your group sings that has really hit home for you and ministered to you whenever you needed a song in your life? Um, what song does Triumphant sing that has meant a lot to you? Wow. That's a good question. That's one thing that I'm thankful that we, we have a lot of songs that I feel like hit a lot of different um, things. I mean, Somebody Died For Me is probably um, hits me pretty good, even though I don't have really anybody that's dealt with the war thing. Mm-hmm. Um, man, Chain Breaker, I mean, you know, yeah. everybody's got stuff. Um, you know, I, I don't know if we have one song that just like this song is everything to me. Uh-huh. But I mean, you know, that's a hard call. Amazing God's another one that I think is um, everybody can relate to. I think songs that relate to everybody yes, tend, yes. Uh, tend to really hit home to me as well. Yeah, um, that's key. I wish I had a better answer for you. No, that's good. That's good. There's so, so many good ones. So what has been one of the most rewarding parts of your singing career this far? Getting to sing with my dad. Um, I don't think that's something that I'll truly appreciate until it's no longer there mm-hmm. or available. Or um, I, tr- I think I do. I think I really appreciate it. I don't think I take it for granted. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I do. Um, so, matter of fact, I feel terrible. I'm going to call him after this and tell him I love him. No, I'm joking. I'm done. No, but uh, <laughs> yeah. hold on. I got to call my dad. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, that's that's probably the number one thing i mean there's many other things but that's something that will probably never be duplicated again uh, in my uh whatever whatever comes from the rest of my singing career that will never be duplicated the feeling of sharing all these moments over i could start naming moments over the last 16 years and they've all been shared with him standing right beside me. So it's, it's pretty, well, that's pretty awesome. great. And it's cool that you watched him do that and then mm-hmm. you didn't want to do it. And then you decided to do it and it's like, you're doing it together. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. It, it's a God, it's a God thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's great. So what has been one of the best stories that someone has told you at the product table? Wow. Um, you know, Amazing God, when Amazing God first came out, uh, there was a guy in West Virginia who um, was going to, he was, he was going to commit suicide. Mm-hmm. And um, he got in his car, was actually driving to do it and uh, turned on the radio and um, Amazing God was on. Wow. And he said, um, he decided during that song that somebody did love him, somebody did care for him. And, mm-hmm. uh, 
and he didn't do it. And I mean, that's, I'm, I'm tear I'm choking up a little bit. Tell yeah. story. That's so crazy. I mean, it's amazing how God can place a song in a mm-hmm. guy's radio. Who's about to do that to himself. Um, I think stories like that are the memories we get at the table that you're like, you know, we get tired. We get tired. I mean, I'm, I'm tired right now. Uh, yeah. And you know, you're just, we were, we were in Canada this weekend. And you should, mm-hmm. You're you going, man, you know, I miss my family. I'm tired. I just, you know, uh, stuff like that is why you go, I, I get it. Yeah. You know, this is it. This is, this is, this is the fuel to go mm-hmm. keep going. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would say, that story has been the most prolific. Now chain breakers had a ton of stories mm-hmm. of people's testimonies of, of them or their kids, or their grandkids. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, how God has used that song and um, be a song of testimonies about how God has used the music mm-hmm. uh, to, to change life or, or turn a life around is, you know, kind of a, yeah. the best thing. Yeah, and it's amazing because it, it just helps you remember why you do what you do. You know, it it, it hey, definitely. everything and yeah. I can get wrapped up in all the um, fun, cool stuff about what we do as far as making of the album. And, mm-hmm. you know, this song's, you know, I love that tempo or I like this song. Or you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Mm-hmm. You know, if we're not making music that can't change a life or can't, remind somebody that, Hey, you're loved or Hey, um, you know, somebody died for you or, mm-hmm. you know, if you've got a problem, he can solve it, you know, mm-hmm. you know, forget all the other stuff, you know? Yeah. So, well, that's amazing. So we're going to get into the speed round, which is just a little bit faster. Um, more fun questions. Um, so what is your favorite oh part of the recording process? Um, hearing the tracks. Cool. Okay. What is one of your embarrassing moments on stage? Uh, uh, too many to say. Uh, okay. forgetting, forgetting words. Forgetting words. I can imagine that would be hard. Okay. Favorite activity to do when you're off the road? Um, play basketball. Fun. Um, do you get tired of getting slapped in the face with a white flag? Yes. Uh, I, I couldn't resist putting that question in there. I had to sneak it in there somewhere. That's that's a good one. <laughs> okay. Do you prefer a small setting, like small town venue, or do you prefer like a big arena type venue? What do you prefer? One, one night, one the next. Awesome. Um, what's your favorite place that you've ever sung? Halftime of the University of Tennessee football game. Fun. Awesome. That was uh, with, the, with the, we sang Amazing Grace in wow. front of, over 100,000 people with their band playing behind us. Oh, wow. I guarantee that was amazing. Man. Wow. Okay. Setting up or tearing down? Because I know you guys do both. So what's your, what, do you, what, do you don't, what do you dislike the most, setting up or tearing down? Tearing down. Tearing down. Yeah, I can imagine. Okay. So those, those were the speed rounds. You did great. You were fast and on it. <laughs> oh. Okay, so the last question that I have is, um, and I like to ask this to anybody, everybody that comes on, um, because everybody has different answers, and I love hearing all the different ones. So what advice would you give someone who wants to do what you do? What, what advice would you tell a young person or even an adult that wants to do what you do? What would you tell them? Well, I would say sing anywhere you can. Mm-hmm. Get to know everybody you can get to know. Go to concerts. Um, you know. Um, get to know people because a lot of times you may be the most talented person in the world, but nobody knows it and nobody knows you. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you know somebody, if you have a relationship with people, um, that's a big foot in the door, you know, go to mm-hmm. concerts, sing at church, sing anywhere. Somebody will let you mm-hmm. um, try to open up for somebody. Um, and two, go to college because it'll still be here when you get out. I love Don't, that. I love yeah, that advice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I love that. That's one thing that um, I haven't really heard from anybody else, but I like that because in case anything, it's very difficult because with industries like this, things are constantly changing and constantly 
revolving and new things come and things, you know, go out. And so I like that advice. That's great advice. And that's advice for somebody who didn't finish. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm giving that advice mm -hmm. is because, um, and it's not too late for me to finish, but I'm saying hindsight, I wouldn't trade anything I've done anything. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like, I feel like I'm right in the center of what God has me. Yeah. But if you're just, you know, I would just get that out of the way. And then I think you'll enjoy uh, the journey a lot more uh, knowing that yeah. you do have that. So, yeah, well, that was great advice. Well, thank you so much for doing this. It's been awesome. I've enjoyed all your answers. They were great. So where can they find um, your tour schedules for triumphant merchandise, CDs, all that? Where can they find that? We have a website, triumphantquartet.com. There's our schedule. You can sign up on an email list. Mm -hmm. All Everything, everything you want to know is on there. Uh, we have Facebook. We have Instagram. We have Twitter. We have... Um, you have we all have, socials. <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have Pinterest. No but, Pinterest. Uh, no, no. <laughs> no, but... Uh, and, and I want to say, too, we're getting ready to... Uh, we have a DVD coming out in a few weeks. It's a, uh, we, we, we don't do DVDs. We've been like eight years mm -hmm. and uh, we just kind of got a collection of live moments of our most popular songs. A lot of the ones I mentioned today, mm -hmm. Amazing God, Somebody Died For Me, Chain Breaker, Love Came Calling, Saved By Grace, all those on a, on a DVD. So it's kind of a best of called mm -hmm. Hits Live. And we're also on the very beginning stages of starting a new album. It'll be out early 2019. And um, yeah. Well, that's great. Yay. A lot of exciting things coming. Well, it was so great to have you on. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, love hey, your answers. They were great. It's an honor uh, to do this with you. And uh, I think you're awesome. And I think it's incredible you're doing this. And I hope that this just, not this interview per se, but I hope this, uh, this interview process for you just explodes and that it just becomes a big, 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 big view thing. So. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, you have a blessed day. Thank you, too. Bye. Bye.